Hello, and welcome to a brief course entitled Budgeting for Federal Grants and Contracts. I'm Andy Rux, professor in the Department of Healthcare Organization and Policy at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thank you for your time and attention. In this course, I will cover the purpose and general content of a grant or project budget, the concept and source of facilities administrative rates, and budget justifications. The Dilbert comic strip by Scott Adams is well known for portraying the frustrations that are frequently encountered in administrative functions. In this cartoon, we see someone who comes to Dilbert and asks for help with a project, but the person doesn't know the scope of it yet. So Dilbert gives an off-the-cuff and blue-sky estimate. The person then says, you don't know anything about my project. And Dilbert says, that makes two of us. This identifies one of the keys to budgeting. The real key is knowing what is to be done, who is going to do it, and how long it's going to take, in addition to what equipment, what travel, what supplies are going to be needed in order to accomplish the goals and objectives of the project. That's the key to budgeting. And I know that if you're engaging in a budget development process that you are an expert in all of these things. Proposals are solicited via requests for proposal or other documents from grant giving organizations, especially government organizations. In their RFPs or proposals, they identify what the grant intends in terms of a vision, its specific aims or strategic goals, the strategies to be employed, and the action plans. In the response that you develop, you are going to give action plans, which is simply a what is to be done, who is going to do it, and how it's going to be accomplished along with the length of time required. A budget translates the narrative of a proposal into a funding request and represents the investigative team's best estimate of cost and time. To get organized, think about the project's plan. Again, you're identifying who's going to do it, that's people, where it's going to be done, those are places, the things that are to be done, those are the actions coming from action plans, and there are indirect expenses. More on those shortly. One of the most misunderstood components of a grant or project budget are the concept of indirects. Indirects are overhead expenses that are specified and required under the uniform guidance, which is two Code of Federal Regulations, Part 200, Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards. As the cartoon suggests, not everyone who views the uniform guidance agrees on what it is. However, it is an important document and it is one with which you and your institution and organization need to become familiar. Every organization that receives $5 million or more in federal awards on an annual basis is required to negotiate an indirect rate, as you'll see on the next slide. It's also called a Facilities and Administrative Rate, or F&A, with the U.S. government, specifically with the Office of Management and Budget. Indirects are equivalent to facilities administrative costs, and they are determined by the facilities administrative rate that has been negotiated by the institution with the U.S. Office of Management and Budget. An example you may find the University of Alabama at Birmingham's rate at the link shown there. For subawards in a budget, the FNA rate to be applied is that of the recipient of the subaward. In calculating the value of indirect rates for your budget, you would take the first $25,000 and only the first $25,000 of the subaward and include that in the total for which you are calculating indirect costs. Computing devices and similar equipment are considered supplies if they cost $5,000 or less. The rate that is negotiated by an institution is known within the institution as its full indirect rate. There are exceptions to the application of this full indirect rate to the allowable cost within a budget. 
Some grants or programs call for applications that restrict the indirect rate or F&A rate. Therefore, the budget may use a rate that is not equivalent to and generally quite a bit less than the negotiated rate in calculating the indirect rates for specific projects. Subrecipients, those who are receiving subawards that have not created a federally negotiated rate, will use what is known in the regulations as the de minimis rate, which is 10%. Many federal awards require that information in the budget be presented on specific forms that they supply. However, it's good to use something like what you see on this slide as a budget template to accumulate the necessary information you will need to complete the federal forms. There will always be a personnel section, a subaward section unless you don't have any subawards, an equipment section unless you don't have major equipment, supplies, travel, other expenses. Then you accumulate the total direct expenses, calculate the indirect cost by applying the organization's F&A rate and the sum of the total funds requested. At the top you'll see the institution name, the organization supplying for the grant, and the name of the principal investigator, also known as a project lead. It's also a good idea to include the title of the project. This template can be used to share with colleagues the overall ideas in the project budget before one completes the specific forms that may be required in a federal agency's request. The personnel section of the budget consists of a schedule of the key personnel in the budget, their salary, and the applicable fringe benefit rate for that person's classification. In this example, there are four individuals that are involved, the principal investigator, two investigators, and a program manager. The program manager will be full-time on the project. The principal investigator and one of the investigators will be three-quarters of their effort or time spent on the project, and one of the investigators will be half-time on the project. To develop the full schedule and cost of personnel, one would take the salary of each person, multiply that times the effort percentage to create a salary. Then the fringe benefit rate is multiplied by the salary to produce the benefits. Then the salary for the project is added to the benefits for the total for each person. That is repeated for the principal investigator, investigators, and program manager, and then all of that's added up. In our example, there's $280,000 worth of salaries, $98,505 worth of benefits for a total personnel cost of $378,505. In the subaward section, one captures the list of institutions, their direct cost budget, and their indirect cost for the project. In this example, we are assuming a facilities administrative rate for institution A is 54% and for an institution B it's 114%. Remember that in terms of direct cost, you would include in your budget for the calculation of indirect costs for your institution the first $25,000 of direct cost for each subaward. So in this situation, we have total subawards of $261,000. The equipment section provides a schedule of all the major equipment that is to be included in this project. The request for proposal from an agency will identify the types of equipment that qualify for inclusion in the equipment section. For purposes of this example, we're assuming that all equipment has been deemed to be includable in direct cost. There are two major items for a total of $49,848. The supply section provides a schedule of the supplies to be used in the project. As noted here, there are two computers and some software included. Please remember that normally we think of computers as being equipment. But since the value of these computers is less than $5,000, they are treated as a supply. 
The same thing goes with the Sirius software that's included here. It's just under $5,000. We've also added some office supplies, paper, equipment, binders, etc. of $400. So the total supplies for this project are $7,635. The travel section is a schedule of the intended travel that is to be carried out by the key personnel in the project. Some states, such as Alabama, have restrictions on the per diem for intrastate travel. I'm using that example here and you would use whatever takes place in your state if there are such restrictions. In Alabama, the per diem is $75 per day. That's lodging and meals. So here we have in-state and we have out-of-state travel. We have provisions for some auto rental and some conference travel stipends which may be required, giving the frequency how many units will be involved, uh, the number of days or meals. In this case, it's generally um, days with the exception of out-of-state travel. Uh, the per diem, which is $200 per for the out-of-state, $75 for in-state travel. We're assuming that the auto rental is $150 per day and the conference travel stipend is $1,000. So the total travel that is being requested in this proposal is $27,000. In the other section, we capture a schedule of things that are considered perhaps miscellaneous but are essential to the project itself. Here, I've identified consultants, meeting expenses, participant incentives, and telephone expenses for a total of $79,180 for this project. Now that we've talked about the parts, it's time to summarize the total cost for the principal investigators or project leaders institution. That would include the sum of personnel, the allowable subaward costs that are included in it, the indirect cost calculation, equipment, supplies, travel, and other. In order to summarize the total direct cost for the PI's organization and then calculate the indirect cost. So for that we have all the personnel, that is salary and benefits, based on the percent effort that each person is giving for $382,505. As you may recall, when there are subawards for grant application, the institution making the application with a primary award may only include the first $25,000 of the subaward in their direct cost. That is $25,000 of the direct cost of the subawards. So in this case, we have two that are exceed $25,000 so there's a $25,000 limit on each one for a sum of $50,000. So when we add up all of those costs, we have total direct costs for the PI's organization of $596,168. To that, we would apply the organization's negotiated F&A rate. The assumption here is that it's 51.5%. So 51.5% multiplied by $596,168 produces indirect cost of $307,027. So the total direct and indirect cost for the principal investigators organization is $903,195. I encourage you for this slide and the previous slide to take out a calculator and follow along and calculate these sums that we're going to speak about in order to uh, see if you agree with the total funds requested. So the total funds requested include the direct and indirect costs for the principal investigators organization, $903,195. That's from the previous slide. Then the subawards are brought back in, their direct and indirect costs, for a total of $261,000. However, we cannot add $261,000 to the 903 195 to get the total amount uh, being requested because you may recall that we used $50,000 of the direct cost of the subawards in calculating the indirect cost for the principal investigators organization. So we have to subtract that. So we create a subtotal 
of $211,000, which is the total of the subawards, $261,000 minus $50,000 previously accounted for. So the total funds requested are $1,114,000. $195. The budget justification is a narrative or prose description of the project itself, describing the people, the places, the procedures, equipment, travel, and so forth that make up the project. You may use the elements of the budget template as an outline or place the similar kinds of things in a template provided by the requesting organization. For the purposes of this discussion, I'm assuming that we can use the budget template as an outline. So there will be a personnel section, and there you will list the names, qualifications, and duties of each of the key personnel associated with the project. If, for example, you have a position for which no one has been assigned, you would describe the duties and list the person as to be determined. The subaward section identifies each institution for which a subaward is included, their unique qualifications and deliverables expected from them. The equipment section identifies each item of major equipment. Remember that major equipment are things that are valued at $5,000 or more, how they will be acquired and how they will be used in the project. The supplies section identifies and categorizes the supplies, why they're needed, how much they cost, what the volume is, and so forth. You may recall in the example that we included computing devices in the supply section because these devices, although we think of them as equipment, were valued at less than $5,000 and therefore they are supplies, not equipment. The travel section details the travel expectations of key personnel, the other section includes all other expenses in the budget not found in any other section. The indirect expense section documents the justification for the indirect rates and the indirect values by applying those rates to direct costs for the project as a whole. On this slide, you will find other resources and trainings available through the Region 4 Public Health Training Center website. On the website, you'll find a list of upcoming trainings, archive trainings, other national training resources. And then the section on budget and finance trainings, you will find a course entitled Budgeting, Linking Strategies to Resource Allocations. If you've not already taken this course, I highly recommend it for you. Thank you for completing Budgeting for Federal Grants and Contracts. I hope you realize from taking this course that budgeting is not a daunting task. It can be accomplished using your expertise of knowing what you're going to do, who's going to do it in your project, how long it's going to take, what types of equipment and supplies and travel you're going to need in order to accomplish the goals you're seeking. You are the expert and therefore you can assemble the necessary information. I hope that you'll find the guidance presented here helpful in your endeavors in creating grants proposals and budgets for those grants. Thank you for your time and attention.